welcome everybody to the January Borough Board meeting and thank everybody for coming. Um, I just want to call the meeting to order and start with the pledge, please, if we could just all rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to start with the attendance. Um, we have everybody present from all of our elected officials. Uh, Brooke was kind enough to email everybody a copy of the minutes. Uh, can I entertain a motion? Jerry first, Joe second. Okay, uh, so we're going to move right into our presentation. Um, we have the New York City Health and Hospitals here with us, uh, and they are going to discuss the origins, eligibility, and benefits of their New York City care program. So, the floor is yours. Um, we sent a presentation. Did you, a power de power PowerPoint presentation, did you get it? Or? No. Okay. No, I thought you were gonna bring a, okay. I'm sorry. It's all right. uh, I can, uh, uh. You emailed it to me? Well, Jonathan did. Yeah. Yeah, right before we that might be easy got on the ferry. Easy. Um, so I, would you be able to pull it up real quick? I, I am positive I did not get it. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm going to um, go and... Yeah, we can take a look. Either way, we can start... Check. I don't want to waste your time, oh. so... Um, I can start talking about it. Um, so, I'm Jonathan Jimenez. I am a family doctor and also working on the NYC care team, specifically on community partnership. Uh, part of why I'm here to share with you about the program. Um, how many of you have heard about NYC Care by the show of hands? Okay, three. What, what have you heard so far about the program? I just, I kind of just heard it briefly in, in, in the past. Okay. Of okay. What kind of outreach program? Okay, outreach program. Um, so, you'll, as you'll see soon, one of the first slides that I wanted to highlight was the number of 600,000 people we think are uninsured in New York City, uh, estimated. Um, a good proportion, about half we think, are eligible for health insurance. Um, and so a big part of the programs that the city is running right now are to get people insured, make sure they're screened and they have access to health care through health insurance. However, there are a large number of uh, the numbers vary, but anywhere from 200,000 to 300,000 people who we think are ineligible for insurance or for whom insurance is unaffordable by the affordable care standard. So that means their premium is more than 8% uh, of their income. And why so why would they be ineligible? Ineligible, yeah, that's a good question. So the main reason that people are ineligible, the New Yorkers are ineligible for health insurance is because of immigration status. So if they're unauthorized immigrants who arrive, then they wouldn't be eligible for health insurance through the New York State of Health. So if um, they have a driver's license, that wouldn't make them eligible? No, no, unfortunately not. Just curious on... No, yeah, wow. especially with the new law, that would, that would make sense. But but no, because the, the it's at the state level, Medicaid is still not available to uh, undocumented or unauthorized immigrants. Um, but we know because of the law, oh, this is helpful, thank you. Um, we know that because of the law, all our, our emergency rooms have to take it in because I mean, it reflects our values, right? We want people to be taken care of in case of emergency. So we have still people that are uninsured going to emergency rooms for hypertension, diabetes. Um, but we saw, at least in the health and hospital system, that half of those people aren't going to primary care. And so NYC Care is essentially a health access program designed to open the doors to um, people that aren't otherwise eligible for insurance so that they can have primary care, preventative services, and not have to go to the emergency room um, yeah, for their care. That's just not good care. You're not gonna be able to get your hypertension taken care of, your diabetes, um, or get your mammogram. And the emergency room, that's not an emergency by definition, right? Um, so, but we think this is important nonetheless for New Yorkers, for our communities, for them to be healthy, right? So, 
uh, to be eligible for the program, uh, the specific criteria we mentioned, you have to be ineligible for health insurance. Um, you also, you could also be by affordability. So if you're, uh, the premiums that you are eligible for are more than 8% of your monthly income. Uh, you also have to be a resident of New York for more than six months. Um, that's also a criteria. Now we, we do at New York City Health and Hospitals um, has what's called uh, New York City Health Hospitals uh, h, h Options, which is a generous fee scale that we provide to anyone who comes, whether they come from uh, New Jersey or Westchester, they have access to that fee scale as part of our mission. Um, but the NYC Care program will only be uh, available to people who New Yorkers who've been here for six months. Um, the, so those are the, and then the other piece is you have to be living in the borough in which we've launched or seeking care in the borough in which we've launched. So as of now, we've only launched in the Bronx. In August 1st, we launched. Um, and we are launching in Brooklyn, Staten Island on January 30th. It's part of the reason for uh, being here is to share with you all that, that news. And that's, are we going to do this on any other do it at Vanderbilt? Exactly, yeah. Vanderbilt will be our uh, Gotham uh, Federally Qualified Health Center here in Staten Island. There's also a neighborhood health center uh, that's much smaller, but also serves Staten Island as well. So are, are all the island FQHCs going to be involved in this? No, that's a good point. So I'm glad you brought that up early, actually. So our, our main goal of the program is to connect people that aren't already connected to primary care, to connect them to primary care. So there are some people already who are already getting care at FQHCs who do great work. Um, well, for those people, we are we'll be asking them when they call to enroll. Yes, yeah. that's perfect. So you all get it over email, so you can take a look. Um, as I said, the timeline we launched on August first in the Bronx, January thirtieth coming to Staten Island in Brooklyn, uh, and we're hoping to be in Manhattan uh, and Queens also by the end of this year, uh, twenty twenty. Uh, and we touched on briefly the sites here in Staten Island, which the major one's Vanderbilt. Um, and then there's the Neighborhood Health Center, which is much smaller, Mariners Harbor. Nothing on the South Shore or on the other side of the highway? Um, I don't know where Mariners Harbor is. But it's, it's that's right, right here, yeah. North Shore. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> no, so I, that is not uh, where our locations are just yet. Um, and then, so then how do you enroll in the program? Uh, how, what do you tell people to do? You, they, there's the 24-7 number, which is 646-692-2273. Um, th this will be on the slides, but I'll repeat it once again. I see you all writing curiously. 646-692-2273. Uh, That's the 24-7 num number to enroll. Uh, you'll also be able to go to the facility, so you can go to Vanderbilt, get an appointment with our financial counselor, and get signed up for the program. Uh, and then we'll also have community-based organizations who we're partnering with in Brooklyn and Staten Island who are trusted voices in the community to share information about the, the program and also enroll people in the program. We'll be announcing who those uh, community-based organizations are very soon. Um, so what happens if there is a new arrival, a new New Yorker who hasn't been here quite the six months? As I said before, we would still encourage them to call because you could still have access to the generous fee scale with New York, which New York City Health and Hospitals provides, still have access to primary care, and then when they hit the six months, they'll be eligible for the NYC Care program and get a membership card in the mail and, the, and all the, the nice uh, benefits. Um, as I said, in the Bronx, we partnered with five different community-based organizations which have been going to all kinds of health fairs uh, and events across the borough. We've had uh, great success. We meet our goal, met our goal of 10,000 enrollees uh, two months early. We had expected that it would be within uh, six months, happened in four months. We're really excited about that. We filled over, I think, 13,000 uh, fills uh, through the extended pharmacy hours. And we've been able to offer 100% of our new patients an appointment with their primary care provider within two weeks which is hard work, I'll tell you that. We're hiring lots of new doctors and new providers to take care of our uh, fellow New Yorkers. And I suppose the, the last piece that I'd love your um,
collaboration on is how do we make sure that everyone in Staten Island that could benefit from the program does? Um, so, of course, you can share, I thought you, you wrote down the number, I think it's one of the best things to do is let, let uh, people know about the program, people that might know other people who would benefit from the program. So spreading the word. Um, on January 30th, also the day of the launch, we're gonna have a day of action. We had that in the Bronx, it was really a fun day, really successful. We had lots of volunteers go out, hand flyers, and some of our major thoroughfares where it was uh, during busy rush hour time to make sure we spread the word. Uh, if you have volunteers, people you think would be interested in doing that, uh, please share your contact information with me. I'll definitely give you all my card. Do you have like a bullet point of this, you know, rather than the whole presentation, so that we can, you know, like one page email yeah. and send it to everybody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah, I can. I we have something like that for sure. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and sorry. Um, yeah. So. Sharing the information as, as you're uh, volunteering to do. Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, the the other level is is really um, asking other people to that are looking to connect people with healthcare insurance, uh, referring them to us as well to see how we can work together to make sure they integrate the program into their workflow so they know about the program and people that are connecting people with services know about the program. We've already emailed several organizations in the community, but you know sometimes cold emails are uh, not replied to understandably. So any connections that in relationship that you all have with these organizations is really helpful. I just wanted to backtrack a little bit. So as far as that eligibility, you said you have to be a nine-month New York resident. Six months. Six months. Mm -hmm. Six months. And is there any other? And uh, so six months in New York, okay. um, and. Because we haven't launched across New York, right. the other criteria right now is that you either live in Staten Island or, bro or one of the boroughs in which we've launched or are trying to get care there. Um, okay. And are ineligible for insurance. Yeah. Right. Due to immigration. Yeah. Yeah. But th this is a good point actually. Don't feel like you need to do the screening, right? So if you, when you call, when they call the number, we will be screening them for insurance. Uh, so really just refer everyone uh, that you that you is, is uninsured, has had trouble getting insurance, we'll make sure they get connected to the right place. Yeah. Or someone who is illegal here in Delta won't for some kind of care, in other words. Yes. Okay. Uh, so how would they prove that they were here for six months, nine months, whatever? That's a great question. So I think there's lots of ways. There's postmark mail um, with your name on it, so we do those sorts of things. but. You know, sometimes because of transients, you're moving a lot, uh, it can be difficult. So we do accept um, self-reported. So if you write a letter uh, and sign it saying that you lived here six months, we accept that into your word. Um, but we ask for mail, things like that. So anybody who's applied for license licenses, as far as the identification license, certainly six months from that day. Oh yeah, that's a great point. So, yeah, I actually didn't don't know what the is there a criteria a residency criteria for the so. licenses or small can you get yeah okay. I'm pretty sure okay so yeah so from date of issue you could that that would be a helpful way to do it too yeah. Um, yeah so I will share with you the slides but also something you could share over email like I said we're looking for um, both volunteers for the day of action but also any uh, other organizations, cultural health organizations that you think would benefit from this information, I'm happy to come myself to continue to do this presentation. Soon we'll have the community-based organizations on board and they'll be able to do uh, tabling at health fairs or present at, at other events to make sure we, we get the word out about the program. Yes? Are you having any interaction with the school system, Department of Education, to let them know that uh, this this information is going to be available for their parents. That is a great. That is a great point. As it's not the first time. It's yeah. I've heard that before, but we actually haven't made that connection. But I'm glad you brought that up uh, because it's it's a key. Well, there are one million children in the school system mm -hmm. in five boroughs, and yep. certainly it would be an opportunity to have uh, the information disseminated to them, as opposed to just standing out handing leaflets at a shopping mall or a <laughs> ferry mall or one visit. Just don't. Yep. 
Yeah, that's true. I mean, even if half the children throw the papers out, um, yeah, yeah. You still have 500,000 kids who may read a piece of paper on this. Mm -hmm. and, and collaboration with DOE is definitely something that we should consider and talk through. Yeah, more. absolutely. Yeah. Again, I don't know if they cooperate with you quite mm -hmm. simply, but uh, some people They're a sister city yeah. agency. <laughs> yeah, I think that they could do the back half ladder because they do it all the time for different city programs. What is it? The what? The back back backpack, backpack letter they call it. Yeah. just stuff them in every uh, oh, okay. child's room yeah. backpack. And okay. You expect them to be in three weeks, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Our organization, yeah, oh, no, I know exactly. there's a fact exactly. organization similar to yours that <clears> are <throat> uh, displayed inside schools and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. that are supposed to be gathered, but I've mm -hmm. spoken about it, so they're not a city agent school. Okay, great. Is there an age that they have to apply? <coughs> like a certain age, like 22 to apply? That's great, that's a good question. So there isn't an age limit, but it's really sort of a secondary barrier because you know it has to be by being ineligible for insurance. So all children in New York State, regardless of immigration status, are eligible for insurance. So really it's adults. Um, but we do have, um, because of their, there are some people that are afraid to interact with the system right now uh, because of rules that are coming out around public charge and those sorts of things. Uh, there's miscommunication, so people don't know that it's in, enjoined currently. Um, so some people are choosing to don't even want to be screened for health insurance. So, so we do have a few children on it, um, but most children will be eligible for health insurance. Yeah. What's the cost of this program? Uh, that is a good question. I think we're just beginning to find that out. We're, uh, it's a very small administrative team. Uh, we're aiming to to keep our administrative costs very low. We're definitely much lower than insurance mm -hmm. companies uh, in terms of administrative costs. Um, and the main costs will likely be, although we haven't uh, sort of fully tracked that out because it takes time to hire doctors, is, is the labor cost of hiring new doctors to take care of. of um, Are there enough doctors available for another uh, 600,000? <laughs> Uh, so it it won't be it won't be six hundred thousand people. No, uh, that's a good point. Half of that, or even even I mean even half that because we brought up for example FQHC. So FQHCs are already doing great work connecting uh, the the population that we're trying to serve with care, even when they can't afford it or regardless of immigration status. So we we don't have really really straight public numbers, but we think it'll be much less than that. Uh, but no, the short answer is no, there are, there, we don't have enough doctors currently, so that's part of the project uh, that we're doing right now. Right. So we're hiring up to meet the need. Exactly. Um, so present state, right, we know that we uh, will have, it, we'll, we will begin to have an influx of patients because of NYC care, and as such, we're hiring uh, practitioners to take care um, of the, the new patients. So who's going to be and, our private? private practitioners, so if folks are part of that program and they sign up, they'll be going to that doctor's office? They'll go, they will go. They will go to any doctor that's within the New York City Health and Hospitals um, system. That agrees but to be in the program? That the, the patients will agree to come through NYC care, but the, the, but the providers are taking care of anyone that comes through the door, whether they're NYC you're care. You're saying you're hiring doctors to take care of Right, because own. we know that there will be an increased there will be more people coming in through NYC care. But will they be, I think what Chris is looking yeah, at, are they, they gonna, are they gonna be private practitioners or are they going no. to be HHC? So, okay. so I should have clarified that. Okay. So all right, it, thanks for clarifying. Yeah, right. that, that's a good question. So all the care, this is, it, that's why it's not health insurance actually. So it's not health insurance, it's a healthcare access program through New York City Health and Hospitals. So it's only through our facility. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all the, the people we're hiring are to work at New York City they Health Hospital. Okay. So yeah. They're hiring doctors hospitals. who are not currently affiliated with H&H. &H. Yeah. They're going to be part of this program and they're going to be located at H&H &H facilities. Yeah, and they'll, be, and they'll see everyone. They'll see, that's what I wanted to clarify. Yeah, yeah. That anyone that walks through our doors will be seen by these doctors. Yeah. But we're making a concerted effort to recruit doctors because we know to that they will be increased. Increased. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah but they won't like only see yeah. uh, NYC care patients. Okay. Yeah. Right. Is there a copay that they're going to have to? The patients are going to have to pay. Uh, yeah. So, so our like there's a fee scale. Um, it's the most generous in the city. So it does start if your income is is uh, below the poverty line. It's zero zero for for primary care visit and a specialty care visit, and then two dollars for uh, for 
pharmacy benefit right now. Um, and that goes up as your income goes up, up to 500,000, uh, sorry, 500% of the, of the federal poverty level. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Great, so I'll, yeah, I'll make sure to pass around the, the, my business card and then uh, we'll make sure to give you the slides okay. and a blurb that you can email. Great. Great, thank you, thank you very much for coming. No problem, thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving right along on our agenda, we did not have any correspondence uh, this month. Does anybody have any old business to bring up? Any new business to bring up? Uh, just uh, we will be going back to um, next month, back to our first Wednesday of the month. This month was just changed because uh, I think for the first time since I've been going to these meetings, uh, the holiday, uh, New Year's Day, was on the first Wednesday of the month, so we will be going back to that schedule. Um, can I entertain a motion to adjourn? Jerry first. Joe, is that your hand up over there? No, no, I'll put it up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, meeting adjourned. Thank you.